Hi, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are, or I am, they are just here because they're just always here. But we, I am making a covered notebook for a good friend of mine. And I am trying to capture her personality in this and some of the things that she likes. And this friend um, is a new friend of mine and she is the most giving person. And one of the things that she has taught me is how to accept gifts. I'm a very giving person too and one of the problems that I have is accepting gifts. And um, she is teaching me how to accept things without feeling the need to reciprocate in a guilt way, if that makes sense. Does that even make sense? Like she does it from her heart. She doesn't do it to get things back. She does it truly because she wants to give. And she would literally, if she, if she had only one shirt and you needed it, even if she needed it more than you, she would give it off of your, off of her back, like without even hesitation. And um, so she, and I'm a lot like that too, but she, I think that she's teaching me a lot about myself through giving me, giving to me. And not only to me, but giving to my family, the girls. And um, she wants to buy a notebook. And I told her, no, absolutely not. You're not gonna buy it, I'm gonna give it to you. And she's like, no, well, that's part of your business. I want to pay for it. And I said, no, you're not going to pay for it. So see, it's kind of like we have this thing back and forth where I want to give her something and she she has a hard time saying, okay, I understand you feel the need to give it and she feels the need to pay for it. And then on the other hand, she wants to give me something and I have this guilt of, no, I feel guilty taking that from you. So I think in a, in a sense we're teaching other the um, lesson of receiving without guilt, if that makes sense. So I am going to make this for her and I kind of have an idea of what I want to do here, but of course I never fully have an idea of what I want to do until it just my creation just kind of comes as I'm doing it. So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to point the camera down and you guys are going to join me in this process, okay? So thank you for being here. Okay, you guys, so I, w I am talking to you and I didn't even have the record button on. I'm glad I looked up. So I've got the front page cut here. Okay, it's not, I'm going to have to do, oh, no, may, just maybe a hair of trimming on this one. Just a hair. Okay, so that's my front piece. Now the thing with making these is, is you're going to have a lot of extra pieces. You could use an eight and a half by nine, but they didn't have the giraffe print in um, eight and a half by nine, so I had to get the 12 by 12. So remember, if you're going to do the insides and the outside cover, it's going to take a full piece of paper to do them because you're not going to be able to get um, two cuts, whether you're using an eight and a half by 11 or a 12 by 12, you're only going to be able to get one cut per page. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you can find it in eight and a half by 11, then by all means get it. Otherwise, you're going to have bigger pieces of scrap. Now, Hobby Lobby did have their paper on sale, so I was able to get these for 30 cents a piece, which is still, you know, I mean, 30 cents for a piece of paper is, is quite a bit, but I specifically wanted the giraffe print. So I think what I'm going to do is put the giraffe print on the outsides, so on the front cover and the back cover, and then I think that 
I, I have another print. She likes giraffe and she likes music. But I kind of wanted to make this feel a bit girly. So I do I did get some floral that I really liked that I think will in the end look really good on this. So I'm considering doing the floral as my binder cover and my inside. So I'm just going to play with it. But I'm going to go ahead and cut my back my back piece here, right? So I want to make sure when I cut it, I have it go in the right direction. Burke's like stacking everything up on me. But you need a groove to do it. Well, I don't need it yet, so don't put everything in my way. So I'm going to line this up. These books are not cut even at all, so don't let that frustrate you. That's why you can't use the templates on these like I tried because they're not all the same. And I knew that. I just thought there would be, um, they would be enough alike that it wouldn't mess me up, but they're not enough alike, so it still messed me up. So you can't use a template. So I'm gonna cut this out. Now if you cut on the inside of your line, it might decrease the fact that you have to trim. It might. You're probably still going to have to trim a bit, but cut on the inside and you might have more luck of less trimming. Now remember, it doesn't have to be exact because we're going to ink the edges of it. The inking not only it finishes the edges, it also helps hide any imperfections. So I like to just measure it up just to make sure that everything is going to fit before. See, that's pretty perfect. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have to trim this back one at all. Okay, so I like to actually get all of my pieces cut. So see how much waste I have from that. I mean, it's not really waste to me because I'll use these scraps eventually in my life, hopefully. I have a whole huge bin. I got a lot of these just because they were on sale. And um, I think they're cute. I don't know. I don't know why I got so many. So I figured these are the smaller ones that I got. So they were half off, so they're 22 cents a piece. And whenever they have stuff that's half off, I just go through and kind of pick, you know, prints that I'm attracted to. I definitely got some more black and white because I'm just attracted to the black and white stripes. So I got some music notes. I, you know, I had her in mind for the music notes, but then I saw the black and white, and I thought of the gorgeous girl dolls. So I thought, you know, I could possibly um, pair this with the giraffe, because she does like music, but I kind of want it to be more girly. So I saw this, and I thought that that would be, like, so cute on that. So cute. And I saw this one, and I thought that this would be absolutely adorable on it. Don't you guys think that that would be cute? So now I have, I'm having a hard time because I really like both of these. I really, really like both of these. I kind of like this one more, actually. And this friend is bold. She's a bold person. So I'm leaning towards this one. She's feminine in some ways, and she's bold. But, you know, when you're making stuff, you've got to put some of your own into it, your own personality. And this is, I am just more leaning towards this. How many pages of this did I get? I got enough. I got four pages so I could do, yeah, I have enough. Okay. Which one, tell me in the comments which ones you guys would have used. Because I like them both. And I do like the music notes. But I want more color in it. 
Like if you were making this for a guy or a girl, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but you know, and I could do this and then add, you know, a flower. I'm gonna sneeze. Or something to the outside if I was gonna Mod Podge, but I'm not gonna Mod Podge. You would want to Mod Podge this just because this is a journal and it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear on the outside edges. And since this has little pieces on it, you would definitely want those to be stuck down good or they're gonna get caught on things. Now, if you were doing it more for um, a more girly girl, fem feminine kind of a person, you could definitely, I mean, look how cute that is. That is definitely cute. This would be absolutely gorgeous on here. Brooke's over here loosening all my stuff up and that could have been the reason why this got all leaky inside there because probably what happened is there was um, something was loose within this glue bottle and so the glue leaked out into the into the connection parts of that hypodermic needle and so it kind of glued everything in and then when I pulled it off it was it was bonded and that's what happened so Brooke you can't play with this okay um look how cute this would be on here I think you can do it. this would be adorable so, I mean, the possibilities are absolutely endless. I got this pink and white stripe. This would be really cute. So, yeah, I mean, the possibilities are absolutely endless. And um, you just have to do what you like. So, I like this one, too. It's hard not to use that one, but I just think that this... Because I think what I'm going to do is use a jute string as my closure. So I think that this is the one that I'm going to go with. I hope she likes it. I think she will. Yeah. Okay. So I've got my cover pieces. So I need to do my inside cover. So to do the inside cover, you want the side that is going to be, you know, you want your page to be up, but I need to trace this shape. So I'm gonna line it face up with where I wanna cut it. I usually line the bottom of my end frame. So I usually line up the bottom where I'm gonna cut it. This is, the most tedious part for me, really. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you want it to be perfect, make it perfect. I'm more of the kind that I'll spend more time to line it up, but if you're not and you don't mind trimming it, you know, once you get it on there, then just do it your way, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, so that's my line. I should have probably did a haul video before I started doing this paper, but maybe I'll just kind of include my haul video during this. I didn't get much because, like I said, it was like an in and out. I just ran in there to get paper, but of course their paper is right next to their clearance, so and their paper is right next to their paper studio flowers, which was 50% off. And you guys know that that's really the only kind of star-bought flowers I buy is from the paper studio, their little packages of flowers. So of course I had to get some of those. Okay, so this is my inside cover. I love this paper. I forget if this is my back or my front. Can you tell me, guys? Absolutely, you cannot tell me because you're on video. I think this was my inside, okay. I'm just gonna lay it in there so that I don't 
forget. And then I need a whole new sheet. This is going to be my back side, so I'm going to line this up. So, you know, you can customize these, and I'm, you know, I, I will customize them. Um, and to be honest with you guys, there were people that really showed interest in these and said, oh, yeah, I want to order one, I want to order one. And you get that a lot when you um, say that you're going to sell something. But to be completely honest with you, I had a lot of people say that, but um, nobody's really come through. So... With that being said, I definitely have the time to custom order, to do custom orders. Now, with that being said, I'll take custom orders, like if you tell me a color scheme or like if you like shabby chic or contemporary type things, I can definitely do that. But as far as wanting specifics, like I only want butterflies like I am I, I can't just go out say and buy new paper packs because as you guys know yes most of the time you can get them 50% off but not all paper packs are 50% off like the DC what is it um, I have one right here um, the DC VW their paper doesn't go on sale very often. And you have to remember that I don't have a store close to me. I mean, it takes me a half an hour to get to a Michaels, and that's getting to a Michaels. It takes me even longer, like 45 minutes, to get to a Hobby Lobby. And for a person that doesn't particularly like to drive, that's a feat for me. So I, if you pick out colors, and give me an idea of a theme, I will definitely do that. But if you're looking for specific papers, I can't really do that for you. I would like for people to pick things out that I've already got made because that's just easier. I think I've got five made. They're all listed on my community Facebook page, which the link is down below. But if you want a specific color, I can definitely do that for you. So now I need to decide, do I want my closure to be giraffe or do I want it to be um, this? And I think I want it to be giraffe this time. I know that I usually use the contrasting paper um, there, but this time I think I want it to be giraffe. So I am going to use my exacto template. Can you get me one of those mailer boxes, Brooke? Let's be kind to each other, okay? Remember, I used the second to the largest one. Yes, for box. And you know, these would also make really nice um, Christmas gifts, also. So, um, if anybody wants these for Christmas gifts and you want me to make them, you need to order them prior to. <laughs> No, not this one, the little envelopes. The ones that you guys took and put them all in your room. Remember those ones? So I need, I actually need two of these. So I've got one more. I try.
try to cut it on the line so that I don't have so much cutting to do. Sometimes that works and other times not so much. But. And plus I don't want to waste, thank you. I don't want to waste a lot of paper. Okay. And the thing is, is I have to get this done today because this friend actually doesn't live far from us. And my husband is meeting her husband to deliver this today so I have to get this done I have so much I have to get done today I have so many ATCs that I've got to get organized and add address and um, I really need to go to the post office today but I don't think I'm gonna make it in time because literally I have so many ATCs that I need to get organized and addressed and in the mail. I have some wishes that I need to get granted where the stuff is already made. I just literally need to get them. This is what the girls do. <laughs> they cut fringe. I need to get them in the envelopes and get them mailed for some wishes that I granted on um, Crafty Lori's site. So I need to get those out. I have some thank you. Some people had sent me some things and I need to get little things back to them. I don't have to, but in order for me to ha be happy and enjoy those things that people have sent me, I need to reciprocate that. That's just the kind of person that I am. I have to send a little something back, even if it's just a thank you card. Now, some people are just like, no, absolutely not, and they won't even give me their address. Because <laughs> they're like, it's just not even necessary for you to do it. I did it because I want to thank you for the videos because you've inspired me or um, that type of thing. You know, I enjoy your videos. and. And, and that's cool, you know, if they don't, if, if they don't want to give me their address, then, you know, a thank you is going to have to suffice me, and um, I can move on with that, but so many of them like to receive, you know, my little happy meals, and um, I'm so happy to send them out, so I do have a couple of those that I need to, to get out. So that's my plan for today after I make this book for this lovely person. I'm gonna cut this little lip off because I don't want that extra little bump. This is just where they fold it over the cardstock envelope. Okay, so I've got my little thing that Brooke was see so what she did is she tightened up her like this so see it comes off in all different places so you have to make sure that everything is all tight because you don't want air to get into the wrong places by it being loose so you just have to make sure that everything is tied up is tightened up. The guy that created this actually sent me a pretty detailed um, email telling me that everything needs to be tightened so you don't want to be torquing on it like Brooke just was because you'll loosen up your caps in places where you don't want them loosened up. I haven't got my new tip from him yet but I when I bought these, I got the two bottle set. So I just simply um, got my other bottle out. And I did add some water to my glue because I was having a hard time getting the glue out. Which it was coming out. I just didn't like to have to push my bottle so stinking hard to get it out. And for this, I could probably just use my regular glue bottle. 
because it's a big enough surface. But these these are great for flowers when you're look, working with little flowers and stuff. So I'm going to put this down. Somebody's a little grumpy, but today. You know, I can never find my credit card things when I need them. This is an old Kaiser card. When I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday, you know how they have the gift cards sitting out? You know, I can use this bottle. If you want to get somebody a gift card, I asked the lady, I said, can I just have one of these gift cards? Because I use them for crafting. And she kind of gave me that. Like I said, well, if you're not comfortable with that, I understand. <laughs> but I tried to hijack a gift card just so that I could quit using my old driver's license. I'm sure I have some old gift cards or something around here that I could use. I just have to look for them. Because they are a lot thicker than these, than like the driver's license and the old Kaiser card. a baby wipe but okay so I'll let that dry wow my throat is so raspy today take a drink <clears throat> Scott let me sleep in this morning which was nice got a little extra shut eye me too the girls have been kind of sick with a cold, so I don't know what that's all about. So I am going to do my front cover first, and I'm going to use this glue bottle that doesn't have the... This is just about gone, so really what I need to do is when I have something that's empty, like this is my paint water thing, I'm going to take these paint brushes out. They're clean. I'm going to turn this upside down so that all of the glue will go to the tip so that I can empty out that bottle. But I am going to go ahead and put glue on the front cover. And you don't need a lot, you guys. Honestly, I'm just not the kind of person that overdoes it with my glue. That's why I like these bottles. Even the one that doesn't have the tip on it anymore, it squirts out less glue than what your glue came in. I do have more glue down in my cabinet, which I can definitely get out, but I want to use what's up in this so that I can wash this bottle so that when my new tip comes, I can just start afresh with this bottle. I don't know why. And you want to get most of this covered because this is that shiny, has that shiny gloss on it. And typically I would have sanded some of this off, but I have found that that's not really necessary on these if you get a good coating of glue on this. And then if you spread it out with your card to make sure that it has um, a good layer of glue in between the paper and the composition book. So just take your time with it. Do 
a good job. I mean, that's what part of, especially if you're going to sell these. And, you know, it's a reflection of you. To, if you're giving it to somebody, you want your work to be clean. I mean, honestly, you don't want to just throw something together, together and give it to them and then it fall apart on them. I would rather take the time to do something extremely neat and precise and it lasts that person than to just throw it together and then it fall apart on them. So that's just me. So the reason why I separated that there is because, and believe me, I can be quite the mess with this glue. And I do get glue. See, like right there, I just got glue on that. You're going to get glue. But my experience with those runners, with the tape runners, is I would so much rather use um, wet glue. I just think that it holds better. It's easier to position. But you want to get all of these air bubbles out. And this is the best way to do that. See, I'm getting glue because I've got glue on my card. So just be aware of that. The nice thing about using the scrapbook paper is you can use a, a baby wipe and wipe it out. So see if you've got an air bubble in there, just work it out. I've never ripped my paper doing that, by the way. But see how I can wipe that glue off? You can see a little wear on the paper right there, but I don't care. And this is going to go on the inside. And actually, while I've got this piece off, so you can see the overlap where I didn't cut my paper short enough here. So while I've got that showing, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And I'm using my little fussy cut scissors just because the edge on these scissors is so fine that I can get close to the notebook itself. Okay, this is still my front cover, so I don't have to worry about my closure yet. That goes on the back cover. But I'm always keeping that in mind because there has been many times where I put the back cover on and I've forgotten to put my closure and you can still put that on top and I have done that and it still looks okay but I like it to go in between the book and the paper okay so again and I'm holding this tight because I don't want thick glue because that's when you get wrinkles in your paper so I want it thin so I am holding this tight not tight, but I'm holding it close to the book itself so that I just get a thin layer of glue. And you might still get some air bubbles, and that's okay, you guys. This is homemade. Most people appreciate those imperfections. It's when we have imperfections on things that were store-bought is when we don't appreciate them. <laughs> See, I still have a little bit of rippling on there. A little bit of glue. So 
especially with this paper because it doesn't have a whole lot of design on it it is gonna you're gonna sh you know it's more like a clean sheet of paper whereas like with this one the things that have more of a design on it like this one you're not gonna see as much of the air bubbles imperfection but since this paper here has less of a print on it less design on the print it's definitely going to show more of the imperfections like these air bubbles and whatnot in it. Okay, so which just goes with the territory. Like this one, you're not going to see as much in it. But I did get some glue on my page. I'm just going to try to wipe it up as best that I can. I always do the way that it is when you're working with wet glue. Okay, so now I need my other giraffe. Okay, guys, I honestly cannot find it, so I'm going to have to cut another piece. Okay, so I want to put it this way. Maybe I never cut it. I don't know. You guys, did I cut it? I thought I cut it. I'll have to go back to the video and look. I am really losing it at this point. Go watch TV or something, okay, because Grandma's having a tough time of it. Yes, I do this like a whisper. What? It's a candy Okay. Sometimes, you guys, Brooke is the moodiest little thing, and if she doesn't get her way right when she wants it, she just... becomes this sassy little thing. and I have no idea why. 
Sometimes she just gets me flabbergasted and I shouldn't let her do that to me. So now I'm adding the glue onto my Peppa instead of my book. Which it's all the same. It's going to go on here. This is my back cover. See, this is why I like the wet glue because I can move it around and position it. I did cut this back cover a little bit short. I knew when I was cutting it, I'm like, it doesn't look right. And then I, when I put it back on there, as you saw, I was like a little short. But Burke was having a moment there, and I think I just lost my concentration. She wants to make a video, but I told her I needed to get this done before she does that. And so her patient level is just not that great when I tell her that she has to wait, but she has to learn to have patience. And I try to explain to her, you have to have patience like I have to have patience with you. But of course that doesn't work on a child. They don't understand that. Okay, so this is my inside cover and see how this is actually going to be too close. I don't want it that close because I don't want that rippling on the paper. So I'm going to cut some of that off. I'm just going to put this in here and I'm just going to eyeball it. I want about a quarter of an inch of that cut off. I'm just going to cut it. That actually kind of went on a little easier, so maybe that was a good mistake. So I'm going to try that again. I'm going to put my glue on the paper. Lamb frame, guys. I should be, right? I got you guys so far out there. should have no problem staying in frame. You don't need to be all that close. You, this isn't really tight work.
like to turn it sideways so I can match up my corners and this one is off quite a bit. Which is okay because I can trim. Oh, see, look, you guys. Oh, I did it. I did it. I need to put my tag in there. Were you guys yelling at me? So, this is my Cricut spatula. This thing is the best thing. I use it for so many things. I can cut some of this off, I don't need it to go that far. I'm going to put some more glue. See, you guys, I almost did that. I'm here, I'm telling you. I'm trying to remind myself not to forget, and here I almost forget. Come on, glue. always tell when it's about time to start school up because your kids start to get bored. So I don't ever measure. I just eyeball it. What are you doing? to bump the walls, okay? So I like to let this dry before I bend it. I know in the past I've bent these. I've like tried to round those out. But recently what I've found is I like to just keep them straight when I glue them in there. And then I'll show you um, my new way of doing that. And you have okay. to set up a shaman room. I do need to trim this. And typically I would have done that, but then I realized, oh no, I need to get that in there before that glue dries, so that's okay. We're all good. problems but I'm oh it's okay I need to just settle down because one of the other issues that I'm having is that I feel like I'm in a time crunch for this and I don't necessarily have to get this done today but I wanted her to have it today so I just need to relax a little bit it's silly for me to feel rushed through. The dog wants in. Okay, so this is going to be my binder. So I just.
Hi. Hi. How's your hair, honey? Good. How's yours? Great. Put bugs in the house. Right? Got it? Papa, I just chained in my sister. Up to the walk. What were you doing? So do you, when you get up, it just falls like that? Yeah, I pinned it back over here. Why? To keep it out of oh, my Oh, from hanging. Wait, do you want to see us share anyone? So Scott, Tom, did you hear him? Oh. <laughs> it's Memorex. <laughs> Why'd you stop at Santiago's? Huh? She's gonna come after this. I just need to get this made. Cause I need you to take it to Brad. What? I need you to take this with you when you meet Brad. Okay, so I just kind of gave this a round edge by rubbing it onto the edge of my desk. And I'm just going to add some glue. I'm really going to add it kind of thick in the binding edge here. I think he likes my haircut. He doesn't like short hair, but I think he kind of likes my haircut. Hey! Do a shame and move. Now? Go keep open that window up there. Okay, so I typically try to just get that in the middle there. And then that way I can kind of maneuver this around. Uh, man, I have lost my mojo today. to get this as even as I can from these sides. I push it down. Dog under my feet, bumping me. My glue is drying. Ay, 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 ay. this video up because I don't want you guys to see me struggle but I am gonna put it up because I want you guys to see me struggle because not everything goes smoothly 
And it's important for you guys to see that. Because I struggle. I have those days. Yeah, this just isn't a good crafting day for me. It's not always works out. The thing with the wet glue is like, did you see how I got that spottiness on there? I can wipe it off. It does distort the paper a little bit, but not so much. We'll get through this. And it's going to look fabulous once I get it done. It's just that I'm struggling through it a little bit. The important thing is to make sure that this is really glued down tight and then try not to open up your book a lot while this is drying and it still is probably gonna lift up a bit but and that's okay just you know let that drew glue have a chance to seal because we still need to put pockets on the inside of this Okay, but we're getting there. So see, there's a lot of work to these. It's not something you can just whip together really quickly. I think I'm gonna look for an image to put down here. Okay, guys, I'm back. I um, got so deep in thought there that I forgot to turn the camera back on. But anyways, the only thing that I did is I printed out this little giraffe here. I'm gonna fussy cut him out. I inked the edges with um, this color box pigment ink. It's it doesn't have the color on it, but it's like a bronzy brown color um, that I got. That was in my mom's um, stash that I got, and so I am just gluing him down. is absolutely just adorable. He's got this look on his face like, hmm, me? Okay, and I also put this rivet in here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same bronzy color, and actually I'm not yet, because I see that I've got some paper hanging over here, so I'm gonna just trim some of this off. I'm just going to check to see what I need to trim. I think everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, I just saw that one spot there. Now, normally I would use black, but I'm going to try this and see what it looks like with this. This is definitely not something that I would have just made. Um, but since this is a custom, this ink is actually a bit dry, so I don't know what kind of results I'm going to get with this. This is a custom one, so this isn't typically something that would have been in my head that I just would have made, you know, on my own. That's kind of the fun about customizing a piece is to try to get the personality of somebody else combined with yours and see what the results are like. So I like to add character to my paper. So that's why it's kind of going on thick here. Because you guys know I don't like the cleanness of the paper. 
you might, and that's okay, but I don't particularly like it. I like my paper to have more character than just what came off the, the print, the printer. I wish this ink pad was more juicy, but I'll work with it here. You see, I like to just get some marks on it. Make it a little bit more dimensional and not so clean. I guess that's the mixed media coming out in me. I just like things to have more character. And put some on him to give him some shine. This pad is like coming off of the plastic. <laughs> Put some on the edges here. So this is probably, let me get my edges before this comes. Come completely off. I'm not so much worried about the inside of the book, but I want the outside to have character. Who knows how long my mom had this ink pad? Probably for a long time. She was more of the kind of crafter that would go and buy things for a specific project, use it for that specific project, and then not use it again. Oopsie. So now I'm gonna try to hold on to it with something. Of my closure here. There. And I am going to toss that boy away. So I just need to add a pocket. I'll use my leftover giraffe print. So I'm going to decide how tall I want my pocket to be. I want it to definitely meet up here. here so that that's um, level and I think I'll just go like to there so it's a pretty deep pocket okay and I'm going to close it but I'm going to hold on tight to it so I don't let go and then I'm just going to trace the outside here big scissors and then I'm going to cut that. And put this part in my trimmer. pocket. Now I want it to be sturdy. So I'm going to take my <coughs> priority mail envelope. And I'm going to lay it on here. I'm going to try 
trace it. Put it on the inside line. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut a little bit off of that because I forgot that I need to fold my paper over the lip of it. I'm just going to cut this down. How much did I cut off? Maybe like three quarters. No, under that. Just under a half an inch. Okay, so then that way when I glue this onto here. I can fold this over. Match up that bottom lip on there. I can fold this down so that nothing will get caught on the top of this pocket and rip this paper off. It'll be a nice clean edge on the top. Okay, and while I have this this way and it's nice and tight and even the way that I want it. I'm just going to go ahead and put my glue along here. glue where I want my paper to stick on the pocket. Um, line of glue in the gutter up there. Press this all down. liner and just go on the three edges that I'm going to glue down in my book. Make sure that I don't have any gaps in it because I want a good seal around the whole pocket. to go eat shaky. Okay, I'm going to match it up. Stick it down. I 
to want to put good pressure on this. This is wet glue, so it is going to take, you know, just a bit, a couple seconds for this to get a good bond on it. So you just kind of want to press it, press it down until that bond happens. put some paper clips around or some binder clips just to help hold this if you wanted to. Which is a good idea. Got a nice sturdy envelope or pocket in there. Now with this, I just fold it over and then you get this nice clean fold on here. Your paper doesn't crinkle or anything on that. And then if you need to go back later, I don't need to, but if you need to go back later, you could squirt some glue in there and then take one of these big binder clips and put it on there until the glue dries since I let that dry real well, I have a really good bond, so I don't need to do that. It's glued really well on both the front and the back. Okay, so now we're going to put a pocket back here as well. Um, if you don't have one of these priority envelope boxes to, either, to do um, both your closure and your pockets, you could use a cardstock. That would be no problem. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to line it up to where my paper edge is. I'm going to mark where I want my pocket to go. About right there. You can do this with paper or the cart or the um, whatever you're using as the base of your pocket and then I'm going to carefully close it and I know I need to cut it right where the lip is folded over here. I'm going to draw my or trace my um, shape of my book. I'm going to cut this excess off. Get it out of my way. This way. I'm going to cut that off where that line is. These are Dollar Tree scissors, and I have never had a problem with them. This is going to go here. That fits, so I need to cut my cutter here. I need to cut this. using a scrap. No, I'm using the draft paper. So 
but there's my scrap. Remember, I want to leave that lip up on the top there. I'm going to line up the bottom here on this side. Less cutting. I'm going to trace my curve. Here, and then how far, however far I want to go up there. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissors, cut my curve. When I looked yesterday while I was at Hobby Lobby to see how much these little um, fussy cutting, these precision scissors are by the Paper Studio, and they're $4.99. So you guys would have an idea. And then I'm going to cut this off. Did I just grab the wrong piece of paper? Because this is like the right size. What did I do? I don't know. It's almost the right size. It'll work. I'm just going to cut this off a little bit over here. I'm just going to cut this. I don't know what I did, you guys, but we're, I'm just going to work with it. <laughs> just an off day. I'm having an off day. Okay, so while I have that like that, I'm going to take my fine liner. Can I add my glue? done. No, it's a long video, but process, process videos are long, as you know, when you, like I've said before, if you're not going to speed them up, they're going to be long, because it's time consuming, like you can't just throw a project together, especially when you're somebody like me, you know, that takes a lot of care in what they're making. It's not something that I can just speed through. Because I, I really want it to be done right. I want it to last. You know, I take great care in what I'm making. And a wasp head in for my face. Uh oh, don't get stung. I not. I walk away and look. Go walk. Why wasp head for people face? Because they know that they'll leave, you'll leave them alone if they head for your face. And I leave that one alone. <laughs> you we know, gonna have a sandwich. Okay, so got that. Jumping. No, a bee head for my fan. I'm not. I wonder why. Cause uh, it's staring at you. No way. 
and it just land on your face. No, I can't walk. Ugh. And it's chasing you. Nope. But it's just chasing me if I walk out. Dale for the wasps not chase us. Right, that what you say? Day Dill. No, don't stay still. You come in the house. What? But it's hard to day deal. Don't stay still. Come in the house. Hey, Rita and I like to run. Well, they'll sting you if you don't get out of their way. Like I just did. I get out the little bit. Good idea, Dale. Right. Grandma, I saw a big grasshopper, so I keep jumping on my head. I, if I was looking for a daddy, oh boy, I'm just super like to jump and at my head. finger. And headbutt me. Yeah, you know daddy is like a headbutt. Mm -hmm. Okay, mom, take us. Do, oh, oh, which shot? A which shot assist is what, what I'm doing. And, um, why, why I'm headbutt? Okay, so for this one, I'm going to take some of this twine. This is all the twine that I used on our Christmas gifts last year. I used these as the bows. I um, used craft paper, just craft wrapping paper. And that I made bows and used this as the um, wrap or the, what do I want to say, the ribbon. But I'm going to make a tassel. Because she had mentioned to me that she liked the tassel that I made. Out of this, so I'm just wrapping this around my exacto. They're cut in, this is cut into pieces, so I'm just wrapping, wrapping it around my exacto template. This is a good way to recycle it. long enough. I'm going to tie it up here. Tie a knot. It's a shorty. Make sure it's tight that it doesn't come undone. Okay, and then just like when you make any other tassels or I'm going to cut all of these at the bottom down here. It's a lot. Okay. And that's what I've got. Take a 
another one. I just need a short one, but I don't know if there's any short ones in there. Come on. It's kind of unraveling on me. This is just cheap stuff. I either got this at the Dollar Tree or at Arbor Freight a big roll. So I don't want my knot to be at the top because I want my um, tassel to be clean. You know what I mean? I want the um, loop to be clean. So I'm going to take this, tie it, get leave it a big long loop or tells tells that's what I'm thinking tie it the size of the loop that I want at the top like that and then these will be come part of the tassel itself my tells become part of the tassel itself okay and then I can cut that first one that I did to get it off of the template like that. So now I've got this. See, I've got this. My knot is inside there. So now you can do a couple of different things. You can just use um, jute to wrap this up to make your little knot which it's kind of thick, or you could use a different string. Let's see what colors I have. Yeah, I have all colors on this thing, so I can really use anything. I think I'll use this natural. It's, it's like a jute. sure everything is really tight and I'm just going to start wrapping this. little tail. I probably should have left it longer for myself. I'm going to tie it. some glue in my knot. I'm just going to push it down in there and use my finger to push that glue down in there just to give it some extra hold. I'm not going to cut these tails all the way to the knot. I'm going to cut them close. Okay, so you still have a little tail there. And then that will be the front of the tassel. See how that looks. Now I need to even all of these up. So depending on how long you want them to be. So if my book, if this is going to hang from my book, if you want it to hang off, that's fine, but it's going to hang from there. So I think I'm going to cut, cut it to about there. I'm going to do this over the trash can. Okay, 
so I just cut those fibers off. So I have this cute little tassel. How oh, cute. Now I could close my book with this jute, or I could tie it with this jute. I think I'm going to use this jute. Okay, so let me show you this again. You need a pretty long piece, depending on if you want your book to wrap once or twice. I think I want mine to wrap twice. I'm going to cut it off. Now this shorter piece is just the piece that you need for it to tie. This is just your tying part. So there's where you're going to loop it. So see how I just have that much looped. And then the rest is the rest of this, okay? I need to stick it through here. I need to stick it through the hole first. Okay, then I need to thread my tassel through the shorter end. Okay, then I need to take this little hole or this string, this tail of the short end, and string it back through my hole. So now this is what I've got. I've got my tassel through the hole. See what the problem is? My tassel's backwards. So I have to take it back out. I'm probably confusing the heck out of you. So I'm just going to take that off, flip my tassel over, string my tassel back through, string my hole back through and now we should be great yeah okay so now i'm just going to put my tassel to the side i'm going to take my two tails feed them through that position my tassel to the front of the book pull these taut Okay, and now my tassel is locked into that loop. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere. Now twine is kind of a funny thing because it doesn't really keep itself tight. Okay, so you may want to do a couple of different things here. You can loop it back through itself. So you have to loosen this back up. Okay, take both of your tails Got to loosen it back up enough to where you can get the string through there. Okay, like that. Just try to pretend like that tassel's not in there. And then you keep them straight, but separate them like this because you're going to take your strings, take one string, your top string, and pull it through. That's your longer string. Okay, and then take your shorter string and pull it through. Like that. And then you have to work those back through to get them tight again. If you're just using baker's twine, baker's twine stays tight on its own. You don't have to go through this, but jute doesn't. It likes to unravel. This kind of makes a macrame knot. So if you don't want to go through this, just use baker's twine. It takes a little bit to get this tightened back up, but you can do it. Okay, and then what I like to do is to knot it from there. You can double knot it. And you can even put a little bit of glue. I'm not going to. But then you're putting less strain on this um, closure. And it looks cool. Okay. And we are done.
So it opens. You've got a pocket here. We've got a pocket in the back. This is dry. This glue dries really fast. The back is done. You've got a closure. So again, the bottom one is your tie string. This one will go around once. It'll go around twice. If she doesn't want this, this one will actually go around three times. I'll actually have it go around three times, and then if she wants to shorten it, she can. Tie it, bow it, and then I like to even up my strings. And if she wants to cut that string shorter so it only goes around once or twice, she can do that so she doesn't have to wrap it three times. Okay, look how cute. So cute. I like it. All right, and then I'll, I'm gonna, since I made this for her, I'm gonna put my stamp in there that says made with love by, but I'm gonna put it on the inside. And that's it. All right, you guys, I know it was long. I hope it helps you um, just you know a couple of little things that I found in making them that hopefully it'll make it easier for you if you decide to make them and um, yeah so I'm not gonna post this until I know that she's gotten it but I hope you all have a good after a good morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world and as always God bless bye bye